Good morning, church, and welcome to worship this morning. Uh, I greet you from uh, our new home. Uh, Amy and I moved this week, which uh, will help to explain some of the less than ideal recording uh, conditions uh, this week, but I wanted to make sure we had a chance to share in worship this morning. So this morning we are continuing in our sermon series on the pursuit of happiness. In our, found, our nation's founding documents, our founding fathers uh, uh, began by saying that uh, there are some truths out there that are so obvious they do not need to be argued in any way. Uh, and w one of those truths is that within each and every human being, we have the right to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. Now, as Christians, we know that Christ told us in John 10.10 10, that the thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy, but that I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. This concept of abundant life uh, makes me uh, think about the idea of happiness that the Founding Fathers had in mind. I don't think they had the idea that Oh, just a fleeting emotion, just a grin across your face all the time. Instead, I thought, I think they believed in a sense of general well-being across the arc of your entire lifespan, a sense that something is well with yourself. And so uh, we're talking about these next several weeks pursuing that kind of happiness, a holistic well-being that overcomes the struggles of the world and the realities that this world can uh, uh, really wear you down sometimes. And yet, we have the joy and the privilege of being able to witness to a, a peace that passes understanding and a joy that overcomes the sorrows of the earth. We've learned from the uh, secular world of positive psychology that uh, there are five characteristics to a general sense of well-being, uh, the happiness that overcomes the sorrow of the world. And uh, those five characteristics can be remembered uh, through the acronym PERMA, P-E-R-M-A, and that they each stand for positive emotion, engagement, relationships, meaning, and accomplishment. Those five characteristics are the, the backbone of a sense of well-being in your life and in my life. And if we are able to, in any way, shape, or form, contribute to how the grace of God works in our life through our own disciplines, and then come out on the other side with a sense of well-being, a general sense of happiness, the ability that when one wraps up their life, they can look back and say, that was a good one. That I'm willing to do whatever is necessary to do, to be able to have a general sense of joy and well-being. We talked about in the first week, positive emotion. Now, while we do not think that uh, positive emotion is the only thing uh, that happiness truly is, it is a part. And so the idea of joyful emotion is a good thing. It is a necessary part of a general sense of well-being across the arc of one's life. We talked last week about engagement and the idea of flow, entering into such an engaged state that you lose track of time. Have you ever been working at something and all of a sudden hours seem to pass in the blink of an eye and you look back and you just felt good having committed so much of yourself to whatever it was you were working on, whether it be in your vocation or whether it be a hobby or just some other uh, thing that really engages every part of you. We learned that true engagement uh, uh, is the perfect match between our skills and the challenges of the activity at hand, where we're constantly bumping against our uh, ceiling of skill level. 
so that we continue to develop and learn and uh, uh, just grow as persons. Today, we're going to talk about relationships. Now, in Genesis 2, 18, God looked down on uh, his new creation and he looked down at Adam this thing he created out of mud. As a matter of fact, that's what Adam's name means. It means dirt. Uh, so he, uh, God looks down at, at young dirt living down there in the Garden of Eden, and he tries, and, and, and he recognizes something. He says, it's not good that dirt is alone. It's not good that the human should be alone. I will make a companion for him. And so God creates companions as our partners. We are divinely hardwired for relationship. It is an absolute necessity for us to be able to develop in our, into our fullest self. We need one another. We need one another to help us uh, uh, experience the world outside of our own perception. We need one another to challenge each other to be better. We need one another so that we can be encouraged when we are struggling. We need one another so that we can be knocked down a peg or two when we think too much of ourselves. We desperately need relationship in our lives. And those who understand the need for relationship in their life, life have a better chance at a life well lived a sense of well-being, true happiness. In order to do this, we must first think about the kind of people we surround ourselves with. There needs to be a core group of people in, with whom we have relationship, quite possibly outside of your nuclear family, who are able to talk loving truth into your life, and you actually listen. I know sometimes uh, Amy will speak truth into my life for quite a while, and then someone else will say it, and then I'll hear it, and she gets very frustrated at me when that happens. I don't know if that ever happens with any of you, but uh, uh, yeah, I do, because some of you have told me that you can talk till you're blue in the face to your spouse, uh, but if someone else mentions it, then boom, it happens. Uh, so it's, it's a pervasive uh, a thing among spouses. But we have to surround ourselves with those kind of people who can speak that truth into our life, and we actually register it. We actually hear it, and we're willing to put it into practice. So we must ask ourselves, with whom am I surrounding myself? Am I surrounding myself with someone who is... A, uh, drawing the best out of me? Or am I surrounding myself with people who are really just either neutral or even worse, are, are really pulling what I don't like about myself out of my, out to the forefront of my personality? We have to think about relationships in a very interesting way now. Relationships, they're not always one-on-one face-to-face -on -one -face anymore. Some of us have better relationships with people on social media than we do with our own family members. Some of us have better relationships with political pundits on television than we do with our own spouses. Some of these people may not be speaking the best into your life and drawing the best out of you. Now it's okay to be around those whom you need to invest in, but the people you allow to disciple you, that core group, the people you see helping pull what is best and holy and good out of you, those are the ones we must intentionally understand. These are my people. This is not my people. These things over here I can participate in as relationships, but they are not the ones that I'm following because they are not necessarily the ones 
that are helping me be the best I possibly can be, the most Christ-like. Now, we surround ourselves with positive relationships because in, in Scripture it tells us in Proverbs thirteen twenty, whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools suffers harm. Now, surrounding ourselves with a core group of people who are able to speak loving truth into our lives and also pull the best out of us so that we are constantly challenged to better ourselves, that does not give us the excuse to turn away from relationships in which we are responsible to invest into another. There will be some people that take more investment of our time and energy than we might receive in return because they may not be one of your core group, but you might be one of theirs. And so what we must do is uh, remember that we are in this reciprocal, very complicated web of relationships in which we may be the person that is drawing out the best in others. And then there are others that we see who are drawing out the best in us. We just must be intentional about who is doing what for our lives and how we are helping others be the best in themselves as well. And we must pay attention to who is speaking into our life and who is trying to disciple us that we do not want discipling us. If they do not speak with the kinds of love and the, uh, the fruit of the Spirit that we know to be true, we don't want them discipling us. But we can invest into their life. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8, we hear, Above all, maintain a constant love for one another, for love covers a multitude of sins. There are going to be people who simply need you to help them be better. We must remember that we were in the exact same boat. We must remember that there were people who looked at us and said, I do not know if this person has the ability to grow at all. And yet they continued to invest in us anyway. And we might be that kind of person to someone else. We might be able to invest into someone even though we're sitting there shaking our heads wondering if anything will ever come of it. We do it because we love one another. Because the sins that are committed are covered in this love. We must surround ourselves with a core group of people who are positively impacting our life. And then we must make ourselves available to be that positive impact in another's life. This sense of reciprocity, this sense of give and take, this sense of experiencing the Spirit of God working in and through the love of neighbor, that is what helps to build a life of happiness and true well being. This relationships is the core of our religion, the core of our faith, the core of why we exist. Why do we exist? To love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. These two are always held right next to one another. You cannot do one without the other. Let us pray. Almighty God, help us for uh, when we need to be that positive relationship for someone else. Help us also to look at the relationships that we are allowing uh, in our lives to shape us and who we are. Help us to see that there may be relationships in our lives that we're allowing to shape us, that they're not supposed to be the ones that are shaping us. We're supposed to be the ones that are being positive impacts upon them. Help us to see that there is a core group of people that you have placed in our life that are speaking truth into our lives that we may not always like to hear, but that it is your truth 
into our life. And that whether we like it or not, it is yours and it is something we must hear. Help us to recognize that core group of people, those people who invest in us and draw the best out of us, those relationships that challenge us, that help us to grow, that encourage us, that give us strength beyond our own abilities. Help us, Almighty God, to be your people in this world, seeding this world with the seeds of the kingdom of God through our loving relationship and investment in all of those around us. Help us to be those people who simply give someone a reason to smile, if only for a minute, during the day. We ask all of this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It is wonderful to spend time with you all. God bless you, and I look forward to seeing you again.